Hey there everyone! So about a week ago or so, I was having a brief sort of free-flowing discussion of ideas with a couple of people in Shane Killian's Bogosity Discord server, which is pretty elusive, but if you can find an invite link, I'd say it's a pretty fun time and it's worth going to check out. And one of the comments I made has sparked a decent amount of shit, which was, quote, we ought to start referring to all statists as Nazis in order to both distance libertarianism from conservatism slash minarchy further and to continue drawing attention to the fact that there's no tangible difference in premise between any philosophies which advocate for political rule. Now the main reason this was as controversial as it was, is due to people either misunderstanding my statement or deliberately misrepresenting my argument in order to try and manufacture drama within libertarian circles. Not too dissimilar to how me beginning to refer to myself as a left market anarchist as opposed to an ANCAP. That's a different video for another day though, pretty soon here I think as well, but because almost daily now I get asked what a left market anarchist is, or what left market anarchism is, but I digress. And there are two different ways in which this was misunderstood or misinterpreted. There's a group who, since I've started referring to myself as a left market anarchist, have been attempting to craft a narrative which suggests that I've been... <laughs> slowly developing Marxist sympathies, whatever that means. Yeah, Marxist sympathies, that just sounds like one of those terms, which is designed in a way where you can accuse somebody of something, or at least imply that you're accusing them of something without actually accusing them, so that if you get called out on the inaccuracy of your statement, you can deny accusing them of whatever you're trying to insinuate. But, anyway. Or I'm starting to lean in that direction. Consequently, that group is taking this as me trying to engage in Antifa apologetics, and to justify their position that everyone who's not them is a Nazi. And then there's a group who, because they misunderstood my stance, think that I'm suggesting there's no internalized distinction in how a Nazi would see the state along with their ideal conception of society, of society in contrast with any other affiliation that sees political rule as being legitimate. Which, in short, that was not my actual conclusion that I was driving at. The actual argument which I was making is that there fundamentally cannot be a necessary distinction in the philosophy of a Nazi to any other which argues for the legitimacy of political rule on the premise. Because as soon as the ability to initiate force is assumed to be legitimate, all claims of truth pertaining to what one position says it wants its ideal society to be in contrast with others becomes entirely baseless and solely is structured around premises which are presuppositional in nature. And the fundamental problem with this, which I was highlighting, is that philosophies which have to assume that political rule is legitimate or that society has to have a state don't have any necessary explanation for what they propose a state ought to do that can be confirmed or negated by any means. The fundamental reason why they can't is because the core premise of their argument is rooted in the assumption that there can be a legitimate political rule which has the ability to aggress upon others. If there's no conceptual way to refute a claim by using its own premise or by operating within the framework it creates, it doesn't prove anything because it doesn't carry any sort of tangible means to negate any claims which arrive at conflicting conclusions. So in other words, it can't be used to demonstrate anything. Filthy Heretic has a great video going using essentially this same argument, 
but applied to a critique of moral relativism and how arguments which assume political rule to be illegitimate have to be relativistic, which goes over the sort of base I'm making this argument upon in his own way, which I think is a good watch for anyone who hasn't seen it. You ought to go watch it if you haven't. So in conclusion, I'm saying that you can't create a cohesive philosophy which assumes political rule to be legitimate, because you can't establish any necessary first principles, which means ultimately there is no fundamental distinction between any arguments for political rule, other than their relative preference for what the people arguing for these positions think that the state ought to do. And that's not even getting into the fact that this idea of influencing a government based on ideology and philosophy is a misnomer given the ample evidence we have which suggests that state actors have hegemonic interests as members of a single monopolistic organization, the government, and the interests of the state ultimately revolve around securing more resources for itself, along with socially engineering societies to see the state as being necessary for the interests of every member of said society to be established. Philosophies are used by governments as tools to try and achieve the latter of those two goals, rather than something which confines the state to certain functions, as this conceptual approach would seem to suggest. So my position isn't that everyone who argues for the legitimacy of political rule is a Nazi, or that everyone who isn't a libertarian is a Nazi and therefore Antifa, is, what they're doing is justified. My argument is that there's no necessary and tangible logical step which could be created from the assertion that political rule can be and is justified, and any internalized conclusion regarding what the state is going to do or ought to do. I use Nazism only as an example to establish my argument, and I use this example specifically for two reasons. One, it's inflammatory, so it gets people worked up and it gets people to pay attention. Secondly, it makes the presuppositional nature which I'm trying to highlight immediately apparent. Because of the incredibly controversial nature of the example I created, it's going to end up getting a lot of people interested and in trying to think of a rebuttal, something to desperately point to which they could use to prove me so obviously wrong. And anyone who tries to argue against this claim will only be able to point to how their ideal conclusion, or the ideal conclusion of various types of political affiliations that argue for the legitimacy of the state, are different instead of actually explaining or being able to point to a necessary distinction in how those conclusions are reached or explaining how they got there. So it's kind of bait, I guess, but also not really because bringing up the Nazis served a necessary purpose. So if you were, say for example, to consider yourself a proponent of social democracy, you would be able to say what your preferences for what you think or thought the policy plan or legislation a government ought to enforce is, but a Nazi would use fundamentally the exact same arguments and framework to reach their conclusion, and to argue for what they think a state ought to do. And as a social democrat, you would have no rebuttal to this. You could point to data showing how what they propose produces what you perceive to be negative consequences, but you can't explain why that information necessarily is relevant, or how it makes your state more plausible slash legitimate than theirs. The only way you could establish any sort of actual rebuttal would be to reject the concept of political rule because you would need to argue on logical or ethical grounds. 
Now, this video is by no means a full rebuttal to the concept of political rule being legitimate or an explanation of why necessarily the defining characteristic of political rule is the initiation of force and coercion. We have other videos on this channel which go more into detail over specific aspects of arguments for the state and providing in-depth rebuttals to each of them. There would be no way I can provide a full rebuttal in a single short little news style video like this. This is only to explain how on a conceptual basis, statist philosophies have no cohesion and no coherent means of refuting other statist philosophies without refuting themselves. Anyway, so I'm really sorry that it took as long to get this video out as it did like I, I wanted to get this out a week ago but I just admittedly I felt pretty burnt out lately on recording videos and you know it's easier to make these short little news segments or proto essays and that's sort of what I felt like I was in the mood for and I'll probably revisit this subject in greater detail if further questions are proposed about it in the comments. Also, I've been hooked on this game which you're seeing in the background. It's called Super Animal Royale, which I absolutely recommend, and no, this is not a paid promotion. I'm just trying to get more people playing it. Yeah, it's like Battle Royale, but also not shit. I mean, there's there's obviously a reason, you can see, you know, that, that it appeals to me, but, um, but aside from the aesthetic, uh, just the, the overhead 2D gameplay, it's pretty great. I don't know how many of you guys are gonna remember this, but, uh, if, if you were, um, in middle school or elementary school back in the 2000s, you'll remember a game called Stick Arena Ballistic, which is pretty much dead nowadays, but that was awesome and this game's exactly like this except uh instead of being like an arena shooter this is in the style of a battle royale uh people who remember that are going to love this anyway that's all for today's video if you liked it please comment rate and subscribe and i will see you all next time